اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و بالحق انزلنا ہو و بالحق نزلا و ما ارسلنا کا اللہ بشر و نذیرا صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدتا من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The ayah which I have read means that this Qur'an is al-haq. This Qur'an is al-haq. Indeed, it is al-haq. And the purpose of this Qur'an is to warn the whole mankind. تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا that Allah he is the one who is blessed who has sent down this Quran for whole of the world so what's the purpose to make a warning to make a staunch warning to disbelievers polytheists these criminals, the people who are tyrants, a warning towards the day of judgment and resurrection. The whole theme and the purpose of this ayah and the ayah which I have read before, the Quran is al-haq, is the truth. The same formula which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said at his time, seek ye the truth, it shall set you free. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this Quran is al-haq. This is the only al-haq right now on the surface of the earth. If you have any document which is better than Quran, it's a challenge. Come forward and bring to us. Do not make generalization statements. Do not pass judgments on the wrong bona fide. If you have anything better than Quran, be our guests. Today the topic is how the Renaissance or Renaissance and Reformation lead towards secularism and this is what you call agnosticism, skepticism, and the final culminating point, atheism. Look, the meaning of Renaissance is rebirth. But I wonder, the rebirth was actually not enhancing the political, social and economic point of views, but rather it was going away from God Almighty. Deny Him at the end because it will not serve any purpose. Let me tell you something amazing. Anything in the annals of the history has some reasons. Whatever we have today has something, a domino effect or a ripple effect in the past, which we are facing. As Jesus Christ remarkably said in the Bible, the little leaven leaveneth the whole. If the little amount of yeast does not ferment the loaf, there is something wrong with your yeast and something wrong with your loaf. If something, the seed, is corrupted from the beginning, <clears throat> the result will be destructive. So by the fruit ye shall know them, do men gather grapes from the thorns and figs from the thistles. A good tree will reap the good fruit, an evil tree will reap the evil fruit. So judge ye nation by whole. So let's see whole analysis. You see in Europe, you can divide time into three parts or two, I rather, I, I usually do it. One is medieval times, the day of ignorance, Ayyamul Jahliya of the Europe, dark ages. And second era, you call it modern time. And third is contemporary history's time, like things are going simultaneously in the annals of the history. 
Look, there are two kinds of management. Number one is micro study. Another is macro. Most of the people today, they know only macro study, superficial. But if you keep dissecting a body, you will find there are so many tissues, tendons, muscles, which is connecting all together a body to make a beautiful anatomy. But the problem with us, we are sticking only into the superficial knowledge and there is a purpose. The purpose is to evade yourself from, from the most important aspects of life. So what do we know about secularism? We heard the terminology and that's all. Today I'm going to educate how secularism got reborn. This rebirth of Renaissance Reformation was actually the rebirth or the birth I rather call it of atheism. This is the culminating point where you're going to reach and you will put full stop. Today I'm going to do micro management or a micro analysis introspection towards how this secular society came into born or came into existence. In the history of mankind, you will never find people as a whole or as a nation which will say or proclaim that there is no God. Yes, they did have the concept adulterated, prostituted, coined, but there was something that they believe this is God. But how come in the history that suddenly humanity started believing that there is no God? You don't need any God. You're not obliged to follow any God or goddesses or gods, inverted commas. How come? How come the whole world got, you know, too much like a monkey out of themselves? How come? Flim flam. Hoodwinked. How come there is a limit of these all things? How come the whole world got pulled over the wool, you know, wool over the eyes? How come? You see, as I always say, you can't run with the hair and at the same time you're hunting with owls. There is a way, there is a thing you have to do. A man who does not know how to play the game, what makes him to set the rules or make her to set the rules. You don't know what's happening in the world. What is the aftermath? You don't know who is your creator. Then how are you eligible or entitled to make the laws? It doesn't make any sense. Unless your pride and prejudice come in it. Allah says in the Quran that we have given all the solutions to your problems in this book. But what's the problem? The problem is most of you people are in takabur. You don't want to listen to Quran's solutions. You want to make your own solutions. Man-made laws. Humanism. Francesco. Families. Italians. Started in Italy. Renaissance. And of course I believe that in some part it was needed because of the Pope. Pope was not letting people do anything in Europe. No scientific books to be found in the homes. No Bible to be found in the home. That is why when Gutenberg started printing Bible and all those stuff in the history of Renaissance, he was a supporter and a participant in it. Then people started realizing how many errors, how many mistakes are in the Bible. People don't know. They didn't know for thousands of years people were in his, whatever Pope says, the vicar of Christ. We have to believe. But my respected viewers, uh, fellow brethren and sisters, once this Pandora box was opened in the past, people came to know critical analysis, critical studies of Bible. And then they came to know how many discompenses how many adulterations, interpolations, concoctions were happened in the Bible, in the history of Christendom. 
But who catches the joke? A layman? You have a bunch of laymen in the past, in the dark ages. And people from Italy, Spain, Germany, they used to come. Where? In Washington? In Harvard University? No, in the University of Spain. University of Cordoba, University of Grenada, Granada, you call it, Portaba. People, the youngsters, the young people, lads, all these freshmen students, they come there, study. And after long years of studying, once they got the opportunity of Renaissance, here comes the blast of knowledge of science in the Europe. Isaac Newton, Newtonian era happened. But the extraction, the inner core was Quranic. It is the Quran who gave the philosophy. See and observe in front of you. Allah says, Wala uqsimu nujum, wa innahu la qasamun law ta'alamun azim. Allah says, See, I'm taking the oath of these celestial bodies, stars, and indeed it is the great oath. This is who is trying to focus. Afala yatatabbarul Quran, tafakkur, ponder, contemplate. These terminologies were the basically pioneered from the Quran. Allah says, can't you see how the birds fly? I'm making them balanced. Pressure, air pressure, air dynamics. Everything Allah is pointed in the Quran to people to tadabbur. Allah says in one more place, in Surah Al Imran, if you read from 191, chapter 3, verse 191 to last verse. 200. Allah mentioned the people who ponder and look at the stars in the night and the fakkur about me, about God Almighty. Allah says, I will do rahmah on the judgment. Meaning, you have to tafakkur. You have to see the creation. Allah says in one Surah Al Baqarah, there's a long verse about the ships, how they are stable on the ocean, Archimedes principle. About many things in the Quran, how the people, day and the night, and night and the day, the shifting of sun, everything. Uh, of all kind of natures of scientific studies are mentioned in the Quran. So Muslim scientists did avail that. But of course, every rise of the nation has also a fall. It's time to get fallen. So they have, did, uh, they have done this devil, devilishly, sheepishly, deliberately. They learned the core knowledge engine from the Quranic perspective, from the universities, then when they got too much reformed politically, sorry, religiously, we call it Anglican Church Protestants, they did protest against the Pope in 1400 to 15, it started, Martin Luther and Calvin. They said that we have to, uh, uh, we have to resist Pope's ideology, and they were right in somehow, because you are not letting them read, you make them a bunch of donkeys, inverted commas. You can't live like that. So they did it. They, they started this and then Renaissance got born. Basically, Renaissance aftermath or Renaissance effect which lead what you call Reformation born. I said in the opposite way. So Renaissance started in Italy. It was, Renaissance means rebirth, and it was a rebirth of basically a change, political point of views. We don't need any kings. Western democracy, which led Napoleon Bonaparte to have the French Revolution, deadliest revolution. Idea was inculcated from Italy. So, number one, political change. We need in the society. No more vicar of Christ or these people who are politically ruling us. No theocracy. No demo theocracy. Number two, change in social laws. Number three, economical laws. In socialism, they started the biggest thing of socializing people into the literature, poems, poetry, Shakespeare. Those days also Shakespeare got into fame. So these people were the heroes of those days. And the starter of this person was, his name was Francesco. And this guy is the father of Renaissance, who basically started the philosophy of humanism. Meaning, keep God aside, whatever you worship, put your God into temples. 
in synagogues, in masjid, mosques, we do not need them. Yes, we do need them when we have the matter of rites and rituals. But we do not need them to make our rules, our commands, our society, societal issues. We don't need a solution for God Almighty. We are bold enough, self-actualized enough, self-evident enough to pass all the judgments. So they did Bhagavad, protestant. It's basically, it's not a protest against Pope. It was a protest against God. Of course. So they protested humanism philosophy. And this humanism is now changed into universalism. And this humanism is changed into secularism, atheism, agnosticism, skepticism. Everything is human. Human nature. We have to worry about humanity. Who wants to, whosoever wants to abuse Prophet Muhammad whoever wants to abuse Jesus Christ, whoever wants to abuse Buddha, don't care. Don't, in, don't react. Don't be, you know, pro-reactive. Always be proactive in freedom. And freedom of what? Freedom of speech, freedom of everything in your life. So don't be reactive and don't be pro-reactive. Only be active and proactive. Towards what? Towards one government system. New world order or Jew world order or these old societies. And remember that in the history, these societies were always a support to make these people go further. Muslims have great influence after the birth of Prophet ﷺ. And indeed Muslims were there in their empire. And this was also the attack on the Muslims. To move these people away from everything and not to let them believe into the system of Qanun. Because Quran and Islam are the only sources which provided the blueprint of socio-political economic system of Islam by one man, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, who was tributed by Michael H. Hart to be one of the first person into the hundred most influential people. From Adam to current times, he picked Prophet Muhammad number one. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ The best example is to be found in the stature of Prophet Muhammad This is the point and the crux of the matter. He gave all the rules. Other religions don't have it. So here comes loggerheads. Confrontation. So if we make our own rules, there will be democracy, everybody will be equal, one vote, one man. So Jews will be in the great majority now. Otherwise, there's a speck of the speck or the doodle in the history. Now here comes all one man, one more, uh, one vote, one man. So all are equal. You have billions of votes. So social rules, they know that Islam has all these branches. So we have to a dagger who? Who is daggering who? If Christians and other people do not have these rules, so the one who has the rules, he's being victimized. Common sense. Islam was the only problem for the Western society. Those people I'm talking, not all of them, who have evil intentions, dictation coming from Masih dajjal Antichrist, dictation coming from him, Satan, Lucifer, Dajjal, Shaitan, Shayateen, who have the motive to make people go atheist, atheist, to make people go, go towards ingratitude towards Allah, na shukar. This is what shaitan promised. So these all things when you lead is towards secularism, Satan wins. And that is the covenant, that is all battle about. Otherwise, why we were born? What is the purpose of getting birth? We better stay in Jannah. Testing. Everybody is in the test. Allah is testing us, our faith, our iman, our soul, our spirit. And Allah will say, who is my sabirin? Who is the one who is most persevered in his life? Be patient, inshallah. With the grace of Allah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, Allah will put us into Jannatul Firdos, the highest paradise in heavens, in seven heavens. May Allah accept our efforts. May Allah accept our work. It's the most important dua we should always make. Not to get fame. So when this renaissance happens, these change into the modern translation of the Bible. Gutenberg Bible started. Medici family, they started banking system. And the banking system was not like Rothschild 
who took the gold and gave promissory notes and then deceived the people. It was basically to help and support the people who are the participant of Renaissance. So they gave support, they gave moral value, support, they gave everything, whatever they can, they call Medici family of Italy. And this family became very famous. They coined, they have coins too, and they started currency at, that year, at their times. Then the same time of funding of exploration and voyages started. Christopher Columbus reaches the Bahamas, the Caribbean islands, where the statue is also there, and you know this Lord, this George Floyd issue caused that statue to be, I think so, uh, fallen down, or I don't know. They removed that statue. This is in Caribbean. It is pointing like this towards that. Oh ho! We find the land. This is what they did. They found the land. We found the land. Now what you do after that? Brought all those blacks cross Atlantic trade, triangular trade, dumped them into the Pacific Ocean or dumped them into the Atlantic Ocean. Either the Australia side or either the North America side. One way you have to be dumped. And then brought those people over there and killed 99% Native Americans ethnic cleansing. Who's telling this? In the history. You have written down in the history. The highest ethnic cleansing of any ethnic group were Native Americans. 99% got killed under the name of Bible or under the name of what? Christian missionaries were there with them, those explorers and voyagers. Vasco da Gama, Portugal, all this Portugal, Spain, Italy, these people were coming from there, ships after ships. And they thought the earth is flat. But when they keep rounded, make a complete round, then they realize, oh, we reached to Holland. Holland, you know, they make Holland Australia before. And it was Aborigines. And they found it, oh, okay, there's another chunk. And then they went to West Indies and they thought they are Indians, but they went in basically it was North America and they confused from there where the word Red Indians came. Because he thought he went to the, he reached the Indies Islands. This is what they were exploring. Now once they explored, they got a power, here the Pope goes away. Protestants were in the power, they produced the Anglican Church of England, they supported all voyages, voyages, they started making sculptures, diagrams, this uh, Da Vinci diagram, very famous, Mona Lisa, Shakespeare's poetry, then science, translation of the Bible, Protestants, they removed Catholics books because of this they found realized these and they are not to be found most ancient critical study critical debates happened and they did even change the bible for thousands of years roman catholics were using wrong bible from who vicar of christ who claimed that he has the holy spirit everything is a joke you know nobody knows who is right all of them come like claim that they have holy spirits in them but they are fallen apart from each other ideologies so this started now what happened when racism and universalism started, same while religions were going down, down, Pope goes down. Here the Protestant, they found America, in 1800s they start doing migration, that is why America is the Protestant land. And influenced by Jews, Martin Luther and Calvin who brought these Protestants into the existence. Every time in the history you see these Jews are playing a main role in dividing people, divide and conquer, in religion. So reformation is a change in a religion. Renaissance is a change in the political, social, economic systems. So when they happen, these two things happen. Here comes the gunpowder, colonialism. Muslims were going down into gutter because of their acts, actions. And they found the opportunity. They went there. They know that they are hollow from inside now because they are busy. And the Renaissance brought these matter into the life of enjoyment, love this dunya, materialism, fitna dajjal, and then they lost it. Gunpowder invented, extraction of exfoliation of scientific knowledge were there, so they used this into the evil manipulation. So they got the power, they ruled. Even now you can see, that is why Alama Iqbal quoted, that the only thing Iblis has it are the machinery, weapons, that's all. They cannot give you any good thing of morality, sobriety, piety, charity, brotherhood, all these kind of things you will never find from those Western people. How to make initiative or how to make a plan. Yes, individual one can do it, but the system you never have it. They will never tell you about anything about sobriety, piety from the book which you don't have. The only thing which can they, they can tell and boast all about from the other rest of the world that we have weapons. We have systems, we have powers, no one can you know, attack 
No one can throw the arrows from the Tower of Babel. We have all the systems. These are all expressions. You have it. The power is in our hands. You know what happens to coronavirus. This small speck, tiny microscopic thing has enough, which can, <laughs> which, which, which can demoralize the big nations on earth. So, but I'm talking as a ground facts, because when Allah comes into the matter, then we are nothing. God Almighty's decisions are. But when we talk of the ground facts, the sunnah that you should do your work and you get your results, non-exceptional cases, that's the only thing they can tell you. That we have this, you don't have it. Other than that, they can't tell you anything that we are better than you, Muslims. But we Muslims, spineless, we have only superficial knowledge of everything. We are busy in universities, we are busy to get degrees, we have to increase our alma mater, that's all. The more who is educated, he thinks he has conquered everything in his life. Oh, he's the big person, he's a rich man, he's a billionaire, he's tycoon, bus. That's your label is. This is not, nothing. At the end you will be dead, you know, fallen down into smithereens. Nothing you will have. These two things, when it was having too much influence on everything, English became dominant. English, if you know it, you have the highest salary. You don't know English, you are rubbish into the society. Then after that, this thing started into the shape from humanism, the father of renaissance, change into that everything is insan, respect is insan. Whatever insan feels, make it. If he thinks he wants gay, make him gay. If he has a propensity of homosexuality, let him be homosexual. It is normal orientation. It is not the propensities or absurdities which he acquired by birth. But he acquired it because of the scenarios. This is what I wanted to say. But what they say that, no, he acquired by birth. Sorry to say, I want to say, he acquired by birth, so he has guilt, he, he shouldn't be guilty, he should be scot-free, let him be gay, it's okay, it's normal, God wanted him to be gay. These sicknesses, these ideologies, my body and my will, my body or my authority, these old things, from where they come? Here. This is one of the part of the part of the part of the branch of the secularism. Then secularism came, agnosticism entered. Shuck, shuck, everything shuck. We have this matter, we have to manipulate. There is nothing beside that. We angels, majood wala mafi, we don't care. Malaika, majood wala mafi, we don't care. Jinn, majood, they are there or not, we don't care. Supernatural to paranormal to metaphysical sciences, all are rubbish. Now you become animals. Animals of same hominids. From Homo habilis, here comes <laughs> Homo erectus, now Homo sapiens. Believe that? Darwin, that's enough. Yours for your salvation. So now what's the result of this? You will become a social animal and you have no rights. You will never open your mouth because you have no connection of soul. Everything has a spirit. But soul is only come from Allah. You have to understand, animals have spirits. Every living thing has spirit, but we have soul. Nafs, lavama and ammara. This is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we are different. The one who has a soul, he has to pay for his price. Spirits, everyone has spirits, animals have spirits. So this soul system, they want to remove from you and make you to become animals. Animals, whatever dictation comes from humans. Praxis of hegemony. Follow that. You are not uh, have a right of any association to speak against that.